All right, great. Hey, everybody. Happy Monday. It is Anna Gibbs, and today is Monday. It's 7.30, so it's another session of Monday Morning Mojo, and I'm really excited for you guys to be with me today. I'm excited to be with you today. It's a beautiful day, and it's another week and another opportunity for us to set some intentions and really, you know, I think get clear about whatever it is that we want to do uh, to continue to build this life by design. And I think that uh, that is really one of that one of the mantras that I have here and one of the missions I have for Monday Morning Mojo is to inspire everyone to believe that it really is about building a life by design because, you know, life can happen to you or you can make some decisions about how you want to go through life and what you want to experience. And so, of course, you know, a lot of us here are entrepreneurs and we are building businesses and so there's opportunity for us to also design what what that looks like and today i i'm going to take some content for those of you who are in real estate this may look very familiar i'm going to take some content from gary keller's book the millionaire real estate agent and no this is not about selling real estate this morning uh or or buying or selling real estate what this is is a conversation around energy and the reason I want to talk about energy and creating an energy plan uh, is because when you are determined to build a big life and when you are determined to go after and pursue big goals, whether they be professional and, and business related or personal, um, well, we have to get honest and look at what we need in order to continue on the journey with the stamina and the focus and the energy required to live that big life. And so Gary talks about this. Um, if you have a copy of the MREA book, he talks about this. It starts on page 307. So if you just want to make a note of that. Um, but really what he talks about here is harnessing the energy that you need to really sustain all of the effort and all of the creativity needed for you to be able to design that life and to live your life. And so uh, that's what I wanna talk about this morning. So again, good morning, everybody on Facebook. Let me know that you're here uh, and I'm gonna pull up my, um, my feed. So if you guys have any statements, questions or anything, I'm gonna be able to follow along with you from, from here. So, hey, Madeline, good morning. Thanks for joining. Um, so we're, let's talk a little bit about energy itself, right? Um, and so, energy is not something that can be created nor destroyed. So this conversation is not about creating more energy. It's about harnessing the energy that's already available to you. And so there is this infinite amount of energy available to us in this universe. And so this is an opportunity for you to be open to harness that energy. So energy can't be created and it can't be destroyed, but it can be transferred. So when you think about that, um, how many of you can, can admit that there are sometimes people and situations that can drain your energy? All right, so you, you feel that energy getting sucked away from you. Uh, and then there are people who, or situations and, and experiences that can just raise that feeling of energy or makes you feel like you're getting more energy. Can you relate to that? Right, so that's that's a good example of what I mean by energy is transferred. It can't be created nor destroyed. And so that's one of the first things today, if you're writing notes or, or you wanna get into some actions about this uh, topic, is being aware, number one, of the people, places, and things that bring the energy up and the people, places, and things that might pull your energy down or, or detract from you. Right, so I'm going to give you like 30 seconds to think about that. Write that question down. What are the people, places, and things that bring my energy up? And what are some of the people, places, and things that make me feel like my energy gets lower or actually makes me feel like my energy is being pulled away? And then what do you think my next piece of coaching to you might be? Give yourself an opportunity to be around more of those people, places, and things that bring your energy up. And be aware of how to, if possible, limit the exposure you have to the people, places, and things that may lower or pull energy away from you. Uh, and that's important. 
So I think that um, if you've learned anything from hanging out with me over this uh, last year plus on Monday Morning Mojo, it's probably one of the things you've taken away is that I believe we have the power to create the life that we want. We have the power to design the life that we want. And it always starts with the way that we think. And it always begins with the choices we make around how we're thinking and then our thoughts, right, become our actions. So I think this is such a, a, an important conversation because again, when whatever it is that you're out to achieve, it takes a steady stream of energy to be able to have the stamina to pursue it. And so Gary talks in the book, the MRA book, he talks about five energy areas and I've read this um, in other books and there are other authors and speakers who can, um, who have taught on something very similar. These are the five areas that Gary talks about that he focuses on. Um, I know last year I, um, we led a, excuse me, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, we had a Monday morning mojo conversation around uh, the book, The Miracle Morning. And so that is another approach that is similar to what Gary is talking about uh, here uh, in the MREA book, because what Gary is saying is the way you start your day is the way you will spend your day. So if you're taking notes, that's a good thing to write down. The way you start your day is the way you will spend your day. And so he's identified five areas in which he needs energy and he makes this a priority every day. Um, and you know, again, I think when you hear the five areas, you can probably relate to Gary and say, yeah, I, I could use energy in those five areas too. Um, and so the, the key with, with what Gary talks about is creating a routine early in the morning. And of course, that's the premise of the miracle morning as well. And the reason for that, and if you really think about it, uh, we have much more control of our time, probably from, you know, the time we get up to about 10 or 11 in the morning. Once 10 o'clock hits, the rest of the world is, is, is awake and on its mission for the day. Uh, and they've gone through their own personal routines, right? And now the phone starts ringing and now the appointments are starting, right? So who can relate to that? So if you look at what time you get up and create this energy plan to really start to harness and call in more of the energy available to you, um, could you create almost this, this little orb of energy that will last throughout the day? And so the first thing I'm going to ask you to take a look at is what time do you get up in the morning? Now, I know I might be preaching to the choir because we're here ready to go for the day. It's 730. I've had some people say to me, I would love to be on your Monday morning mojo, but it's a little too early. Um, you know, that was an intentional thing for me to set this time at 730. Number one, it was before I got my day started too. So it was practical, but it's also an opportunity for people to choose whether or not they wanted to get a good early start to their week and their day with something that was positive, with something that would challenge their thinking, with something that was uh, actionable, like I, I hope Monday Morning Mojo has become for you guys. So I think the first opportunity is like, what time do we get up in the morning? And if you were to get up even a half hour early, how much more energy or how much more time would you create? So that's challenge number one. And so uh, with Gary, he learned, you know, that the world doesn't start really going until 10 or 11. So his morning routine was his time. And that's another great opportunity. I mean, when you think about how you move throughout the day, sometimes your time is not only yours, right? So this could be just your time. And so his routine is focused on these five energy areas. And I'm going to take it right out of the book and we'll go through them each a little bit. Uh, the first energy area for him, and this is really something I've seen um, that is in common with most people who are aware of, of harnessing energy and the power it is uh, or the fuel that it creates for you. And, and the first thing is around meditation and or prayer. So look, everyone has a different spiritual practice and belief system, and that's okay, right? So for some of you, it could be prayer, it could be reading your Bible or, or um, 
you know, any, any, any other doctrine that is, that is relevant to you, right? Or it could just be quiet and it could be thoughtful meditation. And it doesn't need to be based on anything religious. It's just you giving yourself an opportunity to quiet your mind which I know kind of sounds a little counterintuitive, right? Like I just got up, I just woke up, my mind's been asleep, but do I need this time to quiet my mind? You do because in, in the quiet, in that prayerful or meditative state, you will receive information, right? You'll start to think things, you'll start to see maybe some, some visuals. And that's a really important part of, of your unconscious or subconscious mind getting into it's, it's really modality of what it's there to do for you, right? It's operating for your benefit. So that quiet, that quiet time, that meditative or spiritual practice, um, that harnesses a, a level of energy that is available to us through the universe that can really do an amazing thing to keep us grounded, but also moving forward at the same time. So I think that's important. The second area that Gary talks about, and I'll get them on page 308 in the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book, is creating an energy plan around physical energy, right? So some sort of exercise or movement. And it's really interesting. There's so much research now that 15 to 30 minutes of movement and exercise, number one, is all you need. I mean, some of you may enjoy an hour workout or, you know, doing, doing things for a longer period of time, but just 15 to 30 minutes a day can do an amazing things for your health and your wellness. And so can you incorporate that into your morning routine, right? Could it be walking, stretching, um, you know, maybe I've talked about some things I like to do, like I stream YouTube through my TV and, and do some yoga right in my family room or dancing, uh, whatever makes you happy, right? But it's about moving the body, stretching, walking. So, so that's an important part of a morning routine that's going to harness more energy. The third area that Gary talks about um, is is really great. And it's around emotional energy, emotional energy. And so this is an opportunity for you to become intentional, right? And aware of these areas you need to really look at to create more energy in your life. So what do we mean by emotional energy? Well, he references hugging, kissing, laughing, connecting with people, right? So if you have uh, someone that you live with, you know, what is that emotional connection or exchange that you have in the morning? Because I don't know about you, I'll be honest that, you know, there are times when I can get up and I'm on, you know, my routine and I'm getting ready for the day and, and my husband gets up sometimes a little later than I do. Uh, and so I can be almost dismissive and be like, quick hug, quick kiss and off I go, right? And we are looking to become much more intentional around this and make that hugging longer, uh, make that, that connection longer and just, you know, and what I mean by longer, it could be 30 seconds, right? But, but that is probably much longer than most of us will give each other. Um, if you have a pet in your home, right? Loving, kissing, hugging your pet. If you live alone, is there someone you can reach out to and, you know, have a quick phone call and just say good morning and have an emotional exchange? So um, I think that that is a really important part of, of our energy, right? So when you look at this energy plan, we've talked about spiritual energy through meditation and prayer. We've talked about physical energy through moving or exercising. Also, by the way, with physical energy, I would, I would write this down. What am I putting in my body first thing in the morning, right? I know some people are like, I'm not really a breakfast person, but still, are you hydrating first thing in the morning? You know, are you having a glass of water before your coffee? You know, that's that's another thing uh, that can do uh, amazing things. Hydration is such an important part of our health, right? So that's that's you know, exercise and movement as well as eating and drinking water hydration. Uh, and now we're talking about this emotional energy, right? Connecting with people and hugging, kissing, laughing, something that just raises that emotional vibration. Could be sharing gratitude with someone in the morning. Then the fourth area 
uh, that Gary talks about that you're going to move into in your in your morning. Again, these are all the things that you're going to do before like 10 a.m. Doesn't mean you do them all boom, boom, boom in an hour. It just means these are the areas you want to really focus on creating it or harnessing more energy. And the fourth one is mental energy. Mental energy. I saw somebody's eyebrows go up. Some must be like, ah. Mental energy. Okay. So what do we mean by that? It means you get into the mode of planning for your day. You get into the mode of looking at your calendar, um, being aware of what's blocked on it already, what other things you might need to focus on today, setting some intentions about the things you want to achieve or accomplish today, um, whatever plans you might have for the day or the week, right? And again, this could take 15 minutes, but it's really about being clear and intentional on how you want to work through the day and what are the results you want to have by the end of the day. Uh, so mental energy, because that clarity will allow you to focus, right? A lot of people talk about focus in, in achieving their goals. Well, it's hard to be focused if you're not clear first. Okay. So the, um, the fifth area uh, is to create energy around your business. It's business energy. So whatever that business may be, I know we have a lot of realtors on here. We have other people doing other things. Uh, we have uh, people uh, on the call who are uh, focused on, on raising a family. And, and, and right now that focus is, you know, around um, being home and taking care of their home and their children. And that's a business too. So whatever it is for you, what, what, what is the energy you need to create to really start to have that momentum in your business? Right. So give you a few things, some specific things to work on that would create business energy. First of all, no matter what business you're in, it's about knowing the distinction between working on your business and working in your business, right? So when you're working in your business, you're keeping the ball moving, you're doing follow-up, uh, you're you know, touching base, you're accomplishing projects, paperwork, right? But when we talk about working on your business, that is where the energy comes from. So when we talk about working on your business, we're talking about prospecting, marketing, client attraction, uh, strategic planning, looking at opportunities, you know, for um, uh, what your, your next quarter is going to look like your next month, right? Setting smaller goals that are part of your bigger goals. So, so like in, in our world at Keller Williams, we talk a lot about uh, tools that help us with that, right? Like strategic planning, like a one, three, five. And then we use, I know it's a lot of numbers. We use something else called a four, one, one. And all that does is helps you take a big goal and chunk it down into manageable, actionable steps each month and each week so that you can see yourself making progress and chipping away towards the goal. So that, that, all of that, if you're working on that first thing every day before all of the phone calls come in and follow-ups and appointments, see all that stuff that I'm referring to that happens after 10 a.m. Or, or, or so, that's all the working in your business, right? But when we talk about working on your business, the, the energy that you harness from that, the energy that you bring into your business and starts to, to take shape in your business is really what's creating more opportunity for you, right? When you're spending time prospecting and lead generating and getting creative around marketing and advertising and how to attract more clients and, and getting into strategic planning, then that's really where the energy is coming into your business to create great things. So those are the five areas Gary talks about. Meditation and prayer is creating spiritual energy. The second thing is looking at your physical energy, right? Uh, getting moving, exercising, hydration, eating a good breakfast. The third area was emotional energy, right? Which is about connecting with people, hugging, kissing, laughing, expressing gratitude. Such a great way to fill your, your bucket and really bring more energy in. Uh, the fourth area was mental energy, which is all around planning and calendaring and getting clarity around what needs to get done so that you have the focus throughout the day. 
And then the fifth area is, is creating energy around your business, whatever that business is. It could be writing a book. It could be running a spa. It could be running a real estate business. It could be selling life insurance. It could be running a household, whatever it is. What, what are those things that you need to really look at doing each day before the rest of the day starts taking time from you that will create energy around the business and really invigorate the business to keep scaling to the next level. And those are the things like prospecting, lead generating, marketing, client attraction, strategic planning, all those things that just really bring more energy in. Um, so I think that it's important for all of us. I mean, again, every week we get together and we're talking about building this great big life, having the right mindset, creating goals, hitting our goals. And, you know, we need to have conversations like this about, well, how do I create enough energy? Ray, I, should, I say I have to watch how I say it. it's not creating. How do I harness enough energy so that I have the stamina and the ability to keep building, right? Because it, it can be a daunting task. The last thing before I just open it up for any thoughts or questions um, is that, you know, if you're going to take notes, write this down. Number one, energy matters. This is an important conversation. Energy matters. How we use your energy really matters. So that's why Gary created the five areas to focus on. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention about this is, is really about how learning based are you? And again, I feel like I'm talking, you know, preaching to the choir, because if you're here, you're, you're, learning based, right? You're looking for opportunities to, to grow and learn. But I want to just ask you, even, even those of us here, how learning based are we, right? Because the reason why this is important is because the more you know, the more, the more opportunities you connect with for learning and gathering resources, it, it, it opens up your mind to creative thought. It opens up your mind to think bigger and to have bigger opportunities. It gives you resources and it gives you, you know, gives you options, right? So I think that just to kind of put a bow on this conversation uh, is to just talk about ways that we can, can use our learning to be more productive and to be more effective, to be more powerful. Um, and when you look at high achievers, they all have this in common. Right. When you look at high achievers, they're they're very aware of harnessing and using energy and how to bring more of that into their life. And they're very aware of being learning based and the benefits of that. So I just again want to put that out to you. What books are you are you reading? When was the last time you read a book or listened to a book? Right. It could be on Audible. Uh, what podcasts are you listening to? How often are you doing that? Is it part of your schedule? Is it something you can get intentional about? How will that allow you to create more energy and bring more energy into your life? Um, and you know, what will those new skills or a greater awareness do to help you continue your on your path to achieving your goals and creating even a bigger bigger goal for the next time, right? So being um, committed to achieving big goals means you have to be committed to really, I think, a path of learning. And so just a couple quick things on that. Uh, remember, growth is intentional. So I would write that down in my notes. Growth is intentional. It doesn't really, the kind of growth that you want to experience is not going to happen by itself. So we have to get clear about how to bring opportunities to us that will help us grow. So a personal growth plan is something that I suggest um, and it's simple. It's just, uh, I even have the blank format for you on the Facebook page. If you go to Monday Morning Mojo in the files, you'll see a blank format for this. And so it gives you an opportunity to think about probably two, no more than two things that you want to do each month for your growth, right? And, and how you want to grow in different areas of your life, right? So it could be spiritual growth. It could be professional growth. It could be, you know, around something specific like a skill set that you want to develop or leadership. It could be about financial health, relationships, right? So you're going to choose a seminar, a workshop, a retreat, a conference, a book to read, a podcast to listen to, an experience you want to go on, right? Things that will help you grow 
in all of those areas. And then of course, uh, it's about keeping it front and center and, and being intentional about accomplishing it so that you put those you know things on your calendar, you set time aside for it. it's not accidental, right? If, if you really wanna get through those books, just, just say, okay, every, you know, day from eight in the morning till 8.30 or whatever, you're going to read a chapter, right? So it's about being intentional so that it really happens. And so I um, recommend a personal growth plan um, to anyone that I work with uh, or coach, because I think that creates uh, the intentionality around how you want to grow. And then that growth is going to give you the fuel you need to achieve bigger things, right? So, um, so that's one thing that I wanted to make sure that I mentioned to you. So all of this is a challenge. All of this is an opportunity. It's simple in concept. It's just wh whether or not you can get into the habits and make the time for learning, for being aware of calling in more of that energy and focusing on the areas of your life where bringing up that energy is going to make a huge impact in, in what you want to experience, what you want to achieve, what you want to give to other people, right? Because if you think about that to energy being transferable, as you're giving someone who's giving and contributing a lot, right? Through what they do, you're of service, you're giving a lot of your energy away. So what are you doing to replenish it? That's what this is really about. So any final thoughts, questions, comments? I saw Sarah, you put something in the chat. I'm going to bring that up. Yeah. Um, I, hi, good morning. I think the, the in versus on. Um, hey, how are you? Um, I, that has so much resonance with me. Nobody has ever sort of talked me through that. That just, that's brilliant. <laughs> oh, good. That was a good aha for you. So what does that, if you don't mind me asking, what does that really mean for you when you, when you have this awareness now, the difference between working in it and on it? Well, so for example, I have, uh, I have been struggling with just the structure of my days, you know, and how to fit in because I've been doing a lot of personal and professional growth stuff. Um, but like one thing will sort of take precedence in a certain day, um, and I won't get other stuff done. So this really sort of gives me a, a chance to kind of reframe that and think about how to how to get, um, well, how to just plan for all of it, you know, yeah. Um, and create a little balance, you know, because you said something that uh, I just want to put out to because someone needs to hear this. And, and so some of us can be guilty of spending too much time working in the business, but some of us can be guilty on working too much on the business, right? There has to be balance of both because all that planning and vision and, and creating, you know, being creative and having all these great ideas. Well, that's wonderful, but then you have to make time to work in it so that it starts to happen, right? So there has to be this balance. So I'm glad that that was important for you. Yes, thank you. That was great. Awesome. Good. Anybody else have any comments or any final thoughts? I'm looking on Facebook too. All right. Good morning, everybody who joined us there. Oh, Madeline says she meditates every morning and sometimes in the afternoon. She rides her bike. Awesome. Vicki, mindset and habits are everything. Love this. I love that you're here and getting so much out of this. And uh, Carolyn says, we, we gave her something to think about. That, Carolyn, I just have to tell you, that is the greatest compliment you could ever pay me or a coach or a teacher or a speaker is when you can respond with, listen, you gave me something to think about because that's where it all starts. So now I'm going to say, uh, everyone, take a minute before you go on to your next thing review your notes, review your thoughts right now, whatever that aha is, and create one actionable item that you can work on based on that thought, right? So that it can really, <coughs> excuse me, it can really show up in your life. All right, everyone, you're awesome. Thank you for joining me every week. I'll see you back here next week. <coughs> oh boy, I'm gonna sign off. Have a good day. Thanks, Anna. Bye.